Hello, YouTube. This is Barry and Linda. Hello. <clears throat> and um, every time we get up, we have our coffee together in the morning. And lately, I mean, we always talk about God and what, he, what He's doing, and we encourage each other regularly with whatever God's been talking to us about or whatever's been happening. And I've been getting this feeling like we're supposed to record ourselves when we have these little conversations because they are very encouraging and I always feel like, you know, others would get something out of this. Absolutely. And so maybe uh, I just thought maybe I should just try this and see what happens. So this morning we're talking about healing and we're talking about how every promise of God is ours to claim in Jesus Christ. The covenant relationship that we're in, because we're getting older. And, and the older you get, the more aches and pains and weird things that you've never felt before. It's like, I'm getting this pain. I don't know what it is, exactly. but it won't go away. I've had it for a few days now. I wonder what it is, you know? And it's easy to get real concerned and scared. And, but it causes you to look back at the promises of God and decide, is God my God? Art not thou our God? That's right. And does not your covenant include promises for healing? every possible thing that could be wrong. And mm -hmm. so we start encouraging each other because she says, yeah, I've, I've felt this little weird pain over here too. And it's like, we just need to pre present these kinds of concerns to the very same God who, you know, did miracles in the Bible for his people. When Jesus was here, he healed whole villages full of people. Yes, he did. And he's still present with us today, just as real as that. The same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is our God. And the promises of God are as real and effective and, and available to us today. And we are given a New Testament, New Covenant promise of vessels of living water That's right. that go with us from the throne of God everywhere we go. We are the temple. And Jesus said when a, when a man lights a, a candle, a lamp, he doesn't light it to hide it, but he puts it on the lampstand where it gives light to all who enter the room. The room is inside of us because it's the holy place. That's where the candlestick was in the, in the temple. And he said it gives light to all who enter the room. So if you're in darkness, all you got to do is go into the inner holy place inside of you because Jesus said the kingdom of God doesn't come with great show and fanfare. It's inside of you. Well, how do you go inside? You turn inward and you get quiet with God. Quiet yourself down, tune to flow, as Mark Verkler says, and think of Jesus and talk to him and search for him with your whole heart and ask him any question that's on your heart. Hey, Lord, I got this pain, just like you would if you went to the doctor. That's right. He is the great physician. You just go to him and say, Lord, I've got this pain. I don't know what it is. And you bring forth his, your concerns to him. And then the next thing he says to me is, Okay, but did you know that I have every hair of your head numbered? Now, why would God number the hairs on my head? Because that seems like the most, you know, it's like a ridiculous thing to do. But he actually knows how many hairs are on my head. If he knows that, then he also knows what's causing this pain that I might be feeling or whatever, or any concern I have. He knows my down sittings as well as my up risings. <clears throat> He's acquainted with all my ways. And whatever thought I think, he knows it better than I do. So that's a comforting thing. And I present myself to him a living sacrifice every day. I want to belong to him. I want his mark of ownership on me. Because that tells every spirit that happens by, don't mess with this guy, he belongs to Jesus. You know, he's told me that. Uh, you ever watch those movies about the mob? And how everybody knows who the mobster's girlfriend is. You don't mess with her. <laughs> right. Because if you do, there could be hell to pay. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't mess with God's girlfriend either, or his wife, his fiance, Because he looks out for us. And I think that spirits learn. Like when they tried to mess with God's prophet in the Old Testament. And they came after I'm pretty sure it was Elijah, but I have to confess. I get Elijah and Elisha mixed up. I get Rehoboam and Jeroboam mixed up. I get, how is it these guys always have such similar names <laughs> who did similar things, you know? 
So whether it was Elijah or Elisha, I think it was Elijah in this case, but I'm just going to qualify it that, you know, one of them was having trouble with the king, Ahab and Jezebel. I believe it was Elijah. But anyway, the king sent a captain of 50 men and said, and, and went and found Elijah and said, the king, king demands, hey, hey man of God, he called him, hey man of God, the king wants your, uh, an audience with you, he wants you to follow me and, and he wants you to come to him. And he said, if I'm a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and eat up you and your 50. And it, it happened. He called fire, <laughs> called fire from heaven down on these guys, 50 of them, the captain and the 50, and burned them up. So the king sent another captain with other 50. And he came and said the same thing. Hey, man of God, follow me. The king wants to talk to you. He said, if I'm a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and burn up you and your 50. And it happened again. Well, the king sent another. <laughs> this king learned slow. He sent another captain with another 50. And this time, the captain was smart enough to say, please don't burn me up. <laughs> yes, he so he went, you know. Well, I think we in the spirit realm, develop a reputation like that after a while. Because we've dealt with some spirits along the way, and they start to get to know who we are after a while. And they're like, I don't want to mess with them. And yet, somehow, they still try to mess with us. Mm. So we just, you know, remember what God said, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Well... That used to bother me, the part about the righteous man, because I thought, well, I'm not, I'm not righteous. According to God, I am. If I'm in Christ Jesus, I'm as righteous as Jesus. Yes. So am I in him or not? Is he in me? If he is, and I belong to him, then all I need is effectual, fervent prayer yes. for it to avail much. And to the degree that I really believe that I am in him and he's in me, and that I, he really does represent me before the throne of God, I can pray in his authority, which is what praying in Jesus' name is. And I can ask and expect with bold expectation of a good result. That's what hope is. And, and Linda and I have been learning something recently. I know I'm doing all the talking here, but until he tells me to shut up, I'm just supposed to keep talking. Um, doing fine. <laughs> we've learned something. Faith, hope, and love, these three abide, meaning these three are going to go into eternity and will be present in heaven above so many other things. A lot of things in this world will not abide, will not go, you know, how much money you make and how big a house you live in and how fast a car you drive and, 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 and your reputation as a, uh, a lot of things will not go into eternity. But these three things will, faith, hope, and love. Well, <clears throat> I used to be really big on faith. And I didn't really focus on f uh, hope or love too much because faith was a full-time job for me. I was always trying to do faith. And I didn't worry about whatever hope and love comes later. I, I, I didn't think that was the focus that much. Lately, I've been learning what hope is and that, love, that all three of these go together. When you add hope to faith, you don't lessen the faith. You just add hope to it. Well, what's the difference? I used to think they were very similar. Faith and hope are almost the same thing. No, they're not. Faith does not need hope to work, but hope needs faith to work. And both of those are present in love. So what hope, the way hope differs from faith, faith can exist apart from hope because you can experience faith out of sheer you know, God provides the faith. He deals to every man the measure of faith. For example, I could go to anywhere, but you remember the Syrian captain who was told by, again, I think it was Elisha in this case, he was told to go and dip seven times in the Jordan River and his leprosy would be healed. And he got angry because, first of all, the prophet wouldn't even come out and see him face to face. He sent a servant out to tell him this. Yes, he did. Do you know how far I've come? Don't you know who I am? You're not even going to come out here and meet me face to face? <clears throat> and he was angry. He was going to go home pouting. And the servant said to him, his servant said to him, you were prepared to pay large sums of money or to do some great thing, if asked. 
in order to get your leprosy healed, weren't you? I said, well, yeah. All he asked you to do is go dip in this water seven times. That's easy, you know, and you're not going to do it? You said, well, okay, you, that's a good point. Maybe I should just go do it because what have I got to lose? Yeah. Well, that's not really much faith, and that certainly doesn't sound like much hope, but he did it, and he got healed. What hope is, is uh, to use again Mark Verkler's wonderful definition, a confident expectation of a good outcome. That's hope. Mm -hmm. If you do faith long enough, eventually hope can't help but happen. True. When you see every time you've done this, every time you, God has promised you something, and that's where faith comes from. I used to think, because they taught this when I was growing up in church, that faith comes from reading the Bible. I read the Bible and I never got faith. I found out faith doesn't come from reading the Bible. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word, and the Word is a person. That's right. He's alive. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and the living Word became the written Word, but it's still a person. It is a reading the Bible does not... Uh, <laughs> I was thinking of this this morning when I woke up, and now I know why. I'm supposed to share it here. I got a kick out of Bob Dylan uh, bemoaning the fact one time I was reading a thing where Bob Dylan, he got perturbed by the number of people that he meets. He can't help but everywhere he goes, he's famous. So everywhere he goes, he meets people who act like they know him. And he said it bugged him because they know nothing about him. And they said, they think because they, they like some song I wrote that they know me. They think they, you know, <laughs> same thing happened to John Lennon when, we, when he was still alive. Some poor guy, some hippie, found where John Lennon was living and was camping out in his bushes. If you saw that, that movie they made called Imagine John Lennon a long time ago, I had it on VHS a long time ago. And this poor hippie guy was in John Lennon's bushes and somebody told John Lennon about it. So he went out to see. He says, what are you doing in the bushes? Well, I came all this way to meet you. Why? Well, because you wrote a song that, that was about me. And John Lennon had to say, first of all, when I wrote a song, he said, I didn't even write that. That was Paul who wrote that one. It was, boy, you're going to carry that weight. And he said, well, that was about me. And he said, no, Paul wrote that. And I, I remember thinking he should have said, I guess you're going to have to go stand in Paul's bushes now. You know? <laughs> but... He was nice and he invited the guy in and fed him and the guy was lucky because George Harrison happened to be there and they all sat around his big table and had a meal and uh, John was very kind to him and sent him on his way but he had to, to tell him, look, just because we, me or Paul writes a song doesn't mean it's about you, you know, and, and Bob Dylan was bemoaning the fact that people think that I'm writing about them or something, saying something that they relate to in any of my songs and then they come up to me and they start talking to me like we're old friends. Just because I wrote a song that you happen to like or find some meaning in doesn't mean that you know me. So stop acting like you know me. Well, there's a lot of people who do the same thing with God. Jesus yeah. told the Pharisees, you search the scriptures daily and you think that in them you have eternal life, yet they testify of me and here I am in your midst and you don't even recognize me. Yep. So it was kind of the opposite. You, th you should know me. Because you know the word, the word is about me, and yet here I am, I'm the author of the word, and you don't even know me. You say, well, none of us believe on that Jesus of Nazareth, so he couldn't possibly be the real deal. And here he is, friends of sinners, tax collectors, harlots, and they say, he couldn't be a prophet of God, look who he lets wash his feet. And Jesus says, see, you don't know me. Just because you know the Bible doesn't mean you know God. So Let's go back to faith, starting with faith again. Well, how... okay, so faith comes by hearing. Yes. And hearing by the word. The word is a living person. If Absolutely. you want to know Bob Dylan, go find him and meet up with him and get to know him. Become his friend. Have a cup of coffee with him and get to know him. And then you could say, I'm friends with Bob Dylan. Now, if you take faith and you do faith, faith is an action it leads to the hope of a res resolution of an issue that you had um, actually faith on. Meaning that if you've got an issue that's out there and you prayed to God about it and you acted on this, this issue with faith, it's going to lead to hope of a resolution of that issue. 
And the more you faith, or the more that you have faith on an issue, and pray to God, and believing that God is going to handle a particular issue, the more hope you're going to have for a good resolution of future events. Because it, every day we have the opportunity to, uh, to act on the faith that we're given on any given issue, whether it's, you know, has to do with something monumental like your health or something uh, minimal like what am I going to eat for dinner tonight. That, you know, faith is out there and we execute it every day, praying to God that he would direct our path on this, that, or the other. So faith leads to hope of a good resolution. But the faith, that's, that's true, but getting ahead a little bit. Because faith, where does faith come from? God deals to every man the measure of faith. How? When he talks to you. When he talks to you, it produces that rhema word. Because he knows intimately what we're going through. And when we bring ourselves to him as a living sacrifice and we wait on him like a waiter waits on a table in a restaurant and says, Lord, can I take your order? What do you want me to do in this circumstance? I come to you, having done all, I stand in your presence and I'm waiting. I'm in the room with the candlestick lit so that it gives light because in you is life and the life is the light of men. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I need a light to my path because I don't know which way to turn in this or that or any given situation. So I'm coming to you and I'm asking you to give me a rhema word. What do you say I should do in this, that, or the other, whatever it is, whether it's my health, my finances, my future, my life today. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation and salvation is me trusting in you. Here in his life eternal, that a man might know thee, the one true God in Jesus Christ whom he has sent. I want to know you. I want to know your word for me. I want to know your faith. Um, give me faith, Lord. Give me a word of rhema, a word uh, from you that I know when I act on it, it produces faith. And when I get to doing that, and I do it every day, that's what gives me hope each day that it's going to work again because it worked all those other times prior to now. That's and right. that gives me hope. So hope differs from faith in that it's an ex a confident, expected Expected. outcome of That's good right. That's right. because I know God's not going to, this isn't going to be the first time he lets me down. Yeah. He's always come through. And the more you get to know him, the more you, you delight in him because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And you always see a smile on his face. He's pleased with you that you're operating through his faith that he gives you. And that you're just simply dealing it like a deck of cards. He says, here, I want you to go play that card over there. I want you to play that card over there. Or whatever it is. I want you to take this faith and go move that mountain with it. Yes. You know, Moses never moved a single mountain. Or he never parted a Red Sea. He never produced one uh, drop of water from a rock through himself. He never did anything on his own. God never said, Moses, part that Red Sea. He would have said, I don't know how to part Red Seas. So God didn't tell him, part the Red Sea. You know what he told him to do? Stretch forth your, your rod over the sea. Oh, well, well, that he could do. Okay, boom. He stretches forth the rod. God parted the sea. That's right. Well, that's what he tells us to do. He says, Barry, I want you to take this money and put it there. You know, you only have $3. I want you to put one of them there, the other one there, and the other one there. I can do that. You know, okay. I want you to do this, that, or the other with your health. I want you to stop eating that and start eating that. I want no, or whatever it and is. And that action of taking that direction leads to the hope in the future that all these other little issues. Exactly. Whether putting this dollar here, putting this dollar there, or expecting that your body would remain in a healthy state, you have the hope of that occurring in the future. And we're to focus on the evil of the day because the evil is sufficient for the day that you're in. And tribulation works experience, experience works hope, and hope makes not ashamed. Whoever puts their trust in the Lord will not be ashamed. That's right. And that means you won't be sorry that you did it. Right. You won't come up going, man, that was the dumbest thing I ever did. No, it'll be the opposite. Anyone who did not put their hope in faith and trust in Jesus is going to be ashamed. God promises that. It's true. All who trust in their own self or in anything other than God will be ashamed. This shall you have of my hand. You shall lie down in sorrow. If you're trusting in anything other than God, you're going to end up sorry you did that. But his promise, because the whole world, we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. The world and the devil and the angels are all watching us yeah. to see what we're going to do. That's why they're called watchers. 
They're watching us to see what we're going to do. And they're, they're sometimes referred to as the university of the angels. They're watching mankind. Uh, we're like their proxy. The good angels are watching us because we represent them. The bad angels are watching us because they want, they're hoping us t to fail. They're the ones putting tribulation in our path all the time, trying to trip us up with all, every kind of uh, temptation and sorrow and, and to get us to mistrust God and get us to, to do something in our own strength rather than trust God. And so God allows the, the wilderness experiences to happen to us because he says he will, with the temptation, provide us a way of escape. And all we have to do is wait on him for, to, 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 to reveal to us what that way is. Yeah. And the more we do it, the greater our hope. And guess what? The final thing is love. You can't help but fall in love with God when you experience how much he loves you. And that's what we're learning. And as we learn this, he simply says, now I want you to share what you're learning with others. And that's why we're doing this video right now. And it's, such, it's really an audio uh, video because... We just we get up in the morning, we have our coffee, and we talk like this with God every day to, every to each day. other. This is what this, and this all came as a result of a prayer that we both prayed before we even knew each other. Way back when I was just a laborer working a labor job because I quit my music career at the time because that's what God asked for me. Uh, somebody just asked Linda, her hairdresser asked her, is God an Indian giver? Because God is asking this hairdresser, Linda's hairdresser, to give her back or to, for her to give back something God gave her. And she goes, I don't, I'm struggling with this. Why would God ask me to give back what he just gave me? Is he an Indian giver? Well, he, just like Abraham and Isaac, yes. He's not an Indian giver. He wants what you have. Like when he told Moses, throw down that staff. And he threw it down and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. And then he said, pick it up by the tail. And it came back to a staff. But it, from that moment on, it was the staff of the Lord. So he wants us to take and throw down like in my case, my musical career, I threw it down before him. I thought I was never going to be a musician again. And I was content if that was the case. And I had to go do labor jobs that I hated. And it was in the midst of one of those labor jobs after years of working at labor jobs. And I, I complained to him one day. I said, Lord, I thought you said we didn't have to toil. All I do is toil for a living. And he said, what would you rather do? And I said, really? And it was like he was saying, okay. What, what would you rather do than this? You mean I can just... Well, let me think about it. And I finally said, I want to be a musician again. And he said, okay. And I watched as like miracle. Events unfolded without going into all the detail. And to this day, I've, I, I said, I want to be a musician and I want to be able to support myself through my music. Now, I, I forgot to ask for a little more over <laughs> and above my Amen. immediate needs because... That came true, but I live sort of hand to mouth. I always make enough to cover my bills and my needs, but barely anything over that. Anyway, Linda made the same prayer when she saw me doing it after I met her and, her and dated her, and then we got married. And she said, I want what he's having, you know? Yes, I did. I want to, because she was working at a job she didn't like. Mm -hmm. And she said, I want to be able to just do music. Well, that's where we are today. And so... Yeah, that is where we are today. <laughs> so this is what we do. We have a gig tonight. We're going to go play music tonight. And it takes faith to do what we do because in the natural, we're constantly being tempted to feel like we're not making enough. We need to do something else. And we're constantly being tempted to feel like we're, we're failures. We just, you know, uh, and yet we know we're doing what we're told. We're doing what we're supposed to do by faith. And it is a thrill ride. But it's like... Rapture Kitty says, one of Linda's favorite uh, channels to listen to is Rapture mm -hmm. Kitty. Yeah. And Rapture Kitty knows that faith is not for wimps. And she says, you know, and Rapture-centric <coughs> lifestyle is not for wimps. It's very It's true. difficult to trust God, but it gets easier when you see that God never lets you down. Every single faith test is like the first time. It feels like the first time, to quote that foreigner song. Yeah. It always feels like a brand new experience like, I don't know how to do this. I forgot. What do I do again? And that's why tribulation works experience and the experience works hope because the more you do it, the more you say, well, the last time this happened, I just did this. I went and asked God, what are you doing to me? And he told me, oh, we're going this way. Here's the way of escape. Just do this. And the, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. And then you see that he provides the way of escape. It always works. And before long, you find yourself falling 
genuinely head over heels in love with him because you're responding to his love for you. But until you do it, look, there's no shortcut for this. Yes. In the Old Testament, the best you could hope for was to be a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth your fruit in your season. Your leaf also does not wither, and whatever you do shall prosper. And that yeah. sounds like a that's, really good deal. That's not a bad that's deal. That's not a bad deal at all. When you and think about it. I, you know, I was going to go and order Mark Verkler's uh, teaching on how to get your finances to be blessed. Because I said, that's what I need. My finances need a blessing, and they're not blessed. So I need that. So I was going to order that. And the same way that God had told me to order Mark Verkler's teaching on the prayers that heal the heart, I was flipping channels when I found that, and he said, I want you to order this. And I argued with him. I said, no, that's not you. That's just me. And he kept persisting. No, it's me. I want you to order that. And he even said, I want you to send it to your mom. I said, well, she's not going to listen to it. He said, I didn't ask you if you think she'll listen to it. I, I just told you I want you to get it. So he says, look, go get your computer out. Turn it on. Get on the Internet and go on Mark. Let's do a Google search for Mark Verkler. So I did that, V-I-R-K-L-E-R. -E he says, now, see where it says prayers that heal the heart? Click on that. I said, okay. Now, see where it says get, you know, credit card number? Order that. Put in your credit card, order it. So I, he led me step by step until I ordered it. So I thought, you know, and, and it turned out to be so, so good. I listened to it. I absolutely loved it. The Prayers That Heal at Heart Teaching by Mark Verkler. So um, later, I saw that he also has how to have blessings in your finances. I said, well, I need that. If anybody could help me, Mark Verkler could. So I, I got out my credit card. I was all ready to order it. And God kept saying to me, don't order that. And I went, what? Why would you say not to order this? This was, you know, his other teaching was so good. Surely this must be good too. He said, no, I don't want you to order that. And I said, Ugh. and it wouldn't go away. So I said, okay. And I stopped. And I said, Lord, if this is really you, tell me why. And he says, okay, do you see where it's book form? Uh, the, the the thing on the teaching on the the, the healing, I, I mean, you're, the the finances in the book form? I said, yes. He says, click on that. And you see how it says, you know, look inside and you get so many pages that you can read for free. So I started reading it inside the book, a sample, and I noticed that every single thing that he teaches is Old Testament. All about tithing and how you have to sow, uh, cast your bread on the water and it'll return, press down, shaken together. And I'm going, well, that sounds good, you know? And, 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 I said, well, what's wrong with this? And then he said, okay, now go and start reading some of the testimonials of people who've gotten this course and who've obeyed it and who've done it and see what they say. So I go on that and I click on, and there's a guy who said he had a business and his business was doing okay, but not great. So he started applying the principles of Mark Verkler and his business picked up. And then he asked God, Lord, how do you see my business? And he said, the answer came back, I see your business as like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth your fruit in its season, and your leaf also does not wither, and whatever you do shall prosper. And the man was very happy. He went away happy because it worked. He got this blessing that everything he was doing that was in the teaching of Mark Verkler was making him like this psalm, Psalm 1. And I thought, Lord, what's wrong with that? I'd be happy with that. And here's what his answer was. He said, Barry... You're already way ahead of this. I said, I am? I don't feel like I'm ahead of that. And he asked me this question. He said, what would you rather be? A tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth fruit? Or would you rather have the living waters that flow out of your innermost being that go with you wherever you go and water a thirsty, weary world? Because he said, that's what you're like. If you went back to that Verkler Example, you'd be going backwards, and I'd have to limit your blessing to a tree planted by the tr rivers of water. I don't want you to go backwards. I want you to stay a tree, I mean, stay a, a vessels of living water that flows wherever you go. He says, I don't think you realize how much blessing you have in your life. You guys are a blessing every time you go to a gig. You bless people at your gig that would never get a blessing if you weren't there. True. You play in places that would, people would never go to church, and yet you bring a blessing to them. And that's why many of the people we minister to are people that don't go to church regularly. Or if they do, they're not getting fed like they should. When they come to us and they say, oh my gosh, I've been looking for this or whatever. So he didn't want us to go backwards and become like a tree when we're already walking everywhere we go. The vessels of living water are flowing through us. 
and he says simply, I want you to share to anyone willing to listen how this works. Faith, hope, and love are going to abide into eternity. We're building up an eternal weight of glory that at his appearing will come like gold tried in the fire unto praise, honor, and glory in Jesus Christ. And that is something worth shouting about and getting excited about. Praise Jesus. Anything to add? Mm -mm. I think that's a good video for this first time. This is our first video that we're doing like this, but I'm hoping that there will be more. Okay, blessings to you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Tell me that whole thing recorded. I don't even press home to unlock. Is it still, it's still recording.